don't keep having a go at me about your YouTube not working, right? You've been doing it a year now. You're the one that wants to do this. Why did you start it? Well, first of all, it started as a hobby, but obviously to clear my mind of my sports I've done for three years. It just it took a lot out of me. I saw it at like, what, seven in the morning. I had to get ready and get the bus for that time. And then I came back in the afternoon, evening, where you want to call it, about 6 p.m. That's a yeah, full, that work there. full day. I was so tired and that. And how stressy was I? How stressed was I like three years ago to how I am now? You were well stressed, yeah. You say that, but Michael, you've gone through so much in your life with stress and everything else. I mean, God, you say stress. What do I do to change and take anything? You I, read. That's just so. Yeah, you I, just sat reading a book. That's not, not doing anything. That's just yeah, but that, boring to me. That clears my mind, right? You, I had you, right, as I found out that your dad was ill, but not only was your dad ill, your dad was also a schizophrenic, which you knew. You lived with that for eight years. I mean, I was a, I was a full-time carer, full-time mum with you as a baby up until you were eight, full-time working, with your dad in and out of hospital, right, then when your dad died, what did I do? Where did I turn? I There was no counsellors for you. There was nothing for you. There was no bereavement. I was your bereavement counsellor. I had to get you through that. Who supported me? Who gave me the support? What did I get? Nothing. Then we find out that your granddad's ill. And then he passed away three years later. Right? Again, who was there? I was there for you, I was there for your nan. Me? Oh, all right, yeah, that one day I came home, I will admit, you absolutely, you you cracked me up that day, you broke me that day. Oh, they cracked you up, you weren't laughing, you were crying. Yeah, because you, you were 11, you'd already gone through that, and I walked through that door after picking you up from school to turn around and tell you that... I was in secondary dad, school. You, no, you weren't, you were, in, you were in year six, you were in your last year at primary school. Was well, I thought you, it was just sort of... No, you, just... no, because your granddad died on April the 1st, yesterday. It was ten years yesterday to the anniversary of your granddad's death. I walked in to pick you up from school, I got home. How I, how I even drove home, I don't know, because I'd been there that night you'd you'd stayed here funny enough in this house with your good mate and her family because I was called to your granddad's bedside I then came in I picked you up from school and I come out you were the one that sat there at 11 years of age you rocked me you cradled me up you cuddled me until a man said to me it's all right mum I'll be there I'll support you because I know what it's like to lose my dad that made it 10 times worse but I actually sat back and looked at you and thought, God, what have I done in those last three years since you lost your dad? I've given you so much. I've given you everything, right? And you've still got the cheek to turn around and tell me you don't. What do you know, mean? You don't know where. You go to me. You've got nothing in your life. You can't do nothing. God, Michael. I can't do anything. I literally can. can't. Michael, there is people out there that need counselling, that have gone through bereavement and things like that. You could do that. You could support them. I know you're not a people person. I'm not a people person. I never have been. I don't do no, people work either. No, but you don't need to do it face to face. You could do it via your YouTube and things like that. There'll be people out there that are losing parents left, right and centre. You've done that. You were eight. You lost your dad at eight years of age. I was going to lose him eventually when I was a kid. And then you, yeah, because you'd grown up. I knew that. I never hid it from you. Where it's wrong to hide it from the kids, that's what I'm yeah, saying. but there's a lot of children out there, but there's people that are older, that are, in my, that are my age, or in between yours and mine, that have lost parents or siblings and things like that and find it hard. I mean, you'd be brilliant. You could do that as part towards part of your channel. Do a bit of counselling. Give people the support. You might not realise it, but you've got a bloody great big, massive big... You're fantastic. You, you, you've never turned to drugs. You've never drunk. You don't smoke. You're level-headed. All right. You don't might not work, but then you're doing an online course. You, you, I mean, you're not one for physical work, but you do mental work, as in you're doing your coursework. I know because I don't want, because I don't I don't want to do. I want you to be like my main work, but it's going to take me over years to get it all right for me because I'm a slow learner. As you I know, know you are, because of your dyslexia and your dyspraxia, 
yeah but it's never never you've never stopped achieving you've put everything into something you always put your all into it all yeah but it's never good enough though that's the thing it's no, never good enough no that's in your mind that it's never good enough well, I that's put, you well I put everything into let's say a video I put everything into a video and then it's like I don't get support, so I've been thinking about stopping, but I never have. I've always gone over that barrier. I've always pushed myself, which yeah. I never do. Yeah. I, I, I've never done that in my life. I've always stopped at the first hurdle. Yeah, but on YouTube, I've gone, I've continued, I've got myself better equipment to make my videos better. I've learned, I'm learning how to edit now to make my videos like that next level. So I'm learning to do now to make people like, people have like the sexy or anything like that to show them like, yeah, you might have a problem, but you can still do it. That's what I want to do, but... Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. What we're, You're having this chat now, but people have got to realise what you've gone through, right? You've gone yeah, through... I've gone through hell and back more have, times than anyone else. You have gone through hell and back, and I've put my hands out, and I apologise for what you went through. I never meant you to go through that, but I never hid it from you. You knew from when you were old enough to understand you knew that your dad was ill. The only thing I hid from you was your, your dad was a schizophrenic. But that was because before I met your dad, years before I met your dad, your dad took loads of different stupid drugs because your dad was a moron, basically. That was the only way I could <laughs> say it. He was a moron. Yeah. But then, because of your dad not being able to cope with the leukaemia, he started drinking. So he became a bit of a prat in that respect. And we went through quite... We went through hell and back as a family in that respect as well i mean you've seen things that children shouldn't have seen and i tried to shield you from that and hide you from it but but yeah it doesn't mean it work it doesn't work i know it doesn't and people turn around and say about domestic abuse that it's easy to get up and leave it isn't always that easy to get up and leave there is always something or some reason why because he always made me he always turned around and told me that I, if I ever left him, I'd never see you again. So, because would that mean that he'd keep you and that I couldn't see you? Or did it mean that he'd kill you or he'd kill me? I don't know. I never put him, I never challenged him. I never put myself up to risk losing you. You were and are my world. You always will be my world. You always have been my world. I've given you everything I can give you. I yeah, and I've been trying to get it back to you, and I just can't you do it now. You don't have to give me it back. Yeah, but you know I'm like, I don't take anything I back. Know, you know, I know, but I'm your mum, I'm your parent, that's what we do. We do what we do because you are my life, you are my world, you're all I've got in this world, apart from your nan. All right, yeah, I've recently got remarried, and that, but I was on my own for eight years previous, after losing your dad. I was on my own for eight years. I didn't jump into bed with the next person that came along, like everybody else does. I didn't, I mean, I didn't go with anybody until you were 16. So I gave you another eight years of my life where it was just me, you, in our own little bubble, in our own little world, getting over everything that we've got over. Because remember, after when your granddad died, I had to be there for you to support you as well as your nan to get your nan over it because your nan and him had been married 50, not quite 51 years. The thing is, though, I'm better off on my own. I always have been. But I'm one of these, I just want to talk, I'm not one for talking to people. I don't want to do face to face or anything like that because I'm like, I, don't, I can't take but orders. I don't mind giving or, things. I'm one of these. I'd rather give orders and take them. I know you're a leader. But this is what I'm saying. This, you might be able to get something through on your YouTube channel with supporting somebody that's going through crap or whatever. Yeah, but everyone goes through crap in their life. But just... Yeah, but not everybody, ne not everybody needs somebody like a counsellor or anything like that. Sometimes they just want somebody that is going to understand them because they've been through it. Counsellors are, they, people, they don't know anything. counsellors are people that have gone to college or university, come out with a degree and go, yeah, I'm a counsellor and I understand you. They don't. Unless you've been in that situation, you can't understand. That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I know because I've been through a hell of a lot. I mean, I was two when I lost my sister. Then I lost my nephew. Then I lost my husband. Then I lost my dad. And you, yeah, 
you've been through enough. So what I'm saying is just carry on and be you. Just be you. Don't be or try to be anybody else. Just be you. If it takes you another year, it takes you another year. Yeah, I was going to be like, I know it's going to be like four years to scale. It doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, it does, because I'm like... Well, get yourself out and do your driving.